All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hi, everybody, and welcome to the last show and tell of the year. Yeah, sort of. I mean, it's, we'll do a bunch of videos. We'll do but, videos. We'll do show and tells. But, but in this format. In this format. Um, it's me, Lady Ada, with me, Mr. Lady Ada, on camera control. We're going to kick it with some folks from the Ada Foot community, and anyone who wants to come by, show All off right. your Christmas, holiday, trees, decorations, or just what you're working on. We want to check it wow. out. We'll be here for 20 minutes-ish. Come on Discord. Yeah. All right. Every uh, single week we do the 7.30 p.m. Eastern time show and tell. We'll be um, changing up the format in 2025, probably doing more and probably different times. So stay tuned for that. And then all throughout this week and next week, we are on a roll. I have four videos that I haven't even got a chance to post. I've been cranking them out. Yeah. We've just been. We um, have a coffee maker. Yeah. <laughs> we've been feeding her eggnog and caffeine, and this is what's happening. So. Um, I think that is gross. Yeah, isn't it? Um, so let's you have to put the alcohol in, I think. I think that's the secret. That'll, that'll cut the, the flavor a bit. Okay. Okay, let's start with Jeff. Jeff Blair, what are you knocking? What you got going Hello. on? Oh, so, so we're talking eggnog recipes tonight? or, or I hope so. Not I good. Yeah, not makes it really good. Yeah. All right. No matter what you so, put it in, it's good. <laughs> um, I've posted up a little bit about this on Mastodon, but I've got a Pi 5 here with the matrix hat or matrix bonnet, sorry, that is what we use on other pies. But now I've got it running with the PIO peripheral in the RP1. So um, it's a little blown out here on the video, but this is doing a 60 frames per second refresh. It's got uh, 10 bits of color. Down here, we've got a little color scroller going on and up here, just like a test pattern. And the latest thing that I got working is this serpentine arrangement. So the pixels kind of go across this top one and then they go backwards along the bottom Ooh, one. And I've got all the grid math. map working. And you know, I'm not the first person to do that. I'm probably like the 50th, but when you figure it, it out for yourself, that's, that's good. Uh, <laughs> uh, so all this is up on my GitHub and I'll share the link, but right now it's just kind of a C demo program that does the low level stuff. And then you can write C code to, to change your bitmap and, and do a refresh. But we get a nice uh, refresh rate on this and next up, I'm going to be working on creating a Python wrapper so you can run this in your Python code on the Pi 5. Yeah, we want and, to do like a frame yeah. buffer, and that way you can then do whatever you want and just blend it to the yeah. frame buffer. You, know, you want to use Pillow, go to town. You want to mirror mm -hmm. the HDMI display, have fun, you know, whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, I think to there's do. a way to do that. How would I know? <laughs> Oh, there, no, there, I've done it. There it's, is? Yeah, you can read the display through the frame okay. buffer and then you scale it or you can just like yeah. cut a piece. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like we're about to unlock a ton of hardware because the hardware is done, it's out there, but now this is the piece that really makes it go. Yeah. Like how long have people been waiting to do this on the Pi 5? Since the Pi 5 came out, it's like one of the top requests. Yeah. And um, because the GPIO system totally changed in the original like Pi 1 through Pi 3, like you were bit banging on the Broadcom chip. And that's fine, except it's like people were limited. Like if you wanted to do NeoPixels, you had to kind of hack the DMA on the PWM. The now the you have access to running PIO programs, which are cool because you can get basically real-time Linux IO uh, right. on all the GPIO pins. Um, yeah, I haven't clocked this particular code that I'm using, but I mean, you can get up to 200 megahertz of rate blasting stuff out in theory. Um, I think I mean, this is, yeah. is operating at more like 25 megahertz, uh, like as the effective rate that the the values are going out, but I haven't yeah. actually scoped it. I just looked at it and said, I'm getting 60 frames a second. That sounds good. Uh, yeah, it's, it is. It is fast. I'm like, I was checking out X lights and it's like, you know, people have, they use like hundreds of little WLED boards, but um, with the Pi 5, you could have, um, you know, a thousand pixels per strand and picking pixels right. on all like 30 GPIO pins and it would yeah. and have Ethernet input and it would be, it would shrug. It would be like, anyways, so let me know when you have something difficult for me to do. Yeah. Um, so we, we did NeoPixelate on the RP2040 and that does up to eight lines. But yeah, I think there's no reason you couldn't just do all the GPIOs as independent strands and you don't even notice I'll also post about this uh, in the Discord, but like what the CPU usage is, I'm pretty sure it's like just unmeasurable. It's zero low. because it's not it, yet. It should be it's, zero. And historically doing this would actually use like a significant amount of the CPU because you're like bit banging constantly. Right. You have a thread yeah. in the background that's like, and it would stutter if you were doing Maybe something Maybe we else. should do a little CPU monitor for this like on the show. 
I always yeah. see you monitor like showing it on the display. Yeah. On the display. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, hey, yeah. if you if you want to to circle back around to me in just a minute, I'll I'll get up here on my keyboard, which is out of reach, and look at the, okay. the CPU usage. Well, okay. Just yeah, we'll, 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 we'll go back to you at the end. So. Yeah. Just, just wave or some, send a signal. When you're yeah. Ready. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just check in with you. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Live live demo. This is like. Iron Maker. Yeah. Here's the ingredients. Can Jeff do it? All right, next up. JP, what you got going JP. on? Hey, I've got a little uh, seasonal animatronic display thing happening over here. So uh, I had originally looked at taking a, a commercially available animatronic and, and messing with it, but those are kind of a pain because they're usually just one DC motor with clever cams. You can't really add servos to them and, and much personality. They kind of are built to do one thing. Uh, so what I've done instead is I've got two servo rigs that are each a pair of servos. And if you look at the software here, this is kind of a representation uh, of what, what I have built here. One of them is a little uh, micro servo pair and we sell a little pan tilt kit. And then I took a couple standard servos and 3D printed a similar thing. And in the software here, once you rig it, you can then do direct control uh, mm -hmm. over your servos. So I've got this little gnome guy that I just kind of plopped, uh, gutted, gutted him and plopped him on a servo. Uh, and then this one's just a little hat because I ran out of gnome guys. Uh, and then down here we can animate with more traditional animation tools. So I have just a little uh, scene of them bowing and the one guy moving and looking at the other guy. It's not anything in, in particular right now, but just to test out the tools, the animation tools there, and then it'll it'll loop. Um, and this is pretty cool because that's that's something I never have been able to do with servos other than kind of code them, but to be able to animate them with proper tools, then you can start to get into acting and 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 little scenes and vignettes that are uh, that are specific. So, yeah. All right. Sorry. Lady it is. Oh, can you um hey JP. Got a kind of thing. All right. So JP, tomorrow are folks going to be able yeah, we'll to see this? Dive in a little bit more on this and then I'm gonna write up a, a thing on this. This is using some software called Bot Tango and I have a uh, Metro board with our little servo uh, shield on top of it. You can drive, I think, up to 16. So you could do eight of these guys if you want a little chorus of, of funny dudes. Uh, that would that would totally be an option. Um, so come on by and, and we'll uh, dig into this. Yeah, I feel like even though, like, you and I have lived a life in the maker world. I feel like even though we've gotten really far with microcontrollers, it's still kind of hard to do animatronics yeah. in a way that um, anyone else could do. Like you can yeah. do it, but it's just like no one else can do it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And the tools uh, like this are a huge missing piece of it because because just kind of coding some random movements or sound reactive stuff is one thing, but to do a performance, to have the kind of UI that an animator is comfortable with, uh, uh, up until I've run across this, Botango, uh, which is free, uh, your only options were things like Motion Builder, which costs a lot of money. Or, yeah. or, you know, doing your own bespoke tools like a lot of studios do who do animatronics. So. All right. Thank yeah. you so much, JP. And we'll see you tomorrow on sure. JP's workshop. I think last one of the year. Yes, it is. Come on. Okay. See you soon. All righty. Next up, let's go to Tim. And then we're going to go to Pedro. Then we're going to check back in with Jeff. Tim, what you got going on? Good evening. I have a couple of things that are unrelated, but both fun Oops, in their own right. So uh, this one is a uh, new learn guide that was published today for Carol the Robot, which is a, an environment for learning to program for new students. Um, the idea is you have this little virtual robot and you have a couple of basic functions that can control it. And uh, there are various different puzzles where your goal is to move the robot around. Sometimes you need to pick up the beeper, which is like the blue square, and drop it off somewhere else. So I have this one rigged up to just go when I start. And his goal is just to pick up the beeper and put it on top of the hill there. Um, so this is one of the more basic ones. And there are a couple others that walk you through various different challenges that let you practice the fundamentals of programming. So it's just uh, meant to be an easy way to learn how to program. So I love attack. like the de-retroing, de like let's like redo this thing that was a thesis, but like in CircuitPython for fun. Oh, yeah, cool. definitely. Uh, the other one is uh, I have these buttons pulled up to control it, but the other one is controlling these Wiz uh, smart lights, which I'll flash briefly. These are like relatively cheap smart lights that you can get at the hardware store online. Um, they're like $15. I have got one 
rigged up in the old uh, miner's lamp here, and I've got some buttons rigged up to control it. Um, I don't think the camera will come in super well. It's all washed out, but you can see I've got uh, one button that can turn it on and off, and then I've got a button that can change the colors to some different RGB colors. Uh, and then I've got a button that can do like uh, color temperatures. So from warm white all the way through to like blinding blue brightness, uh, that's the on off. And then the last one is there's a bunch of scenes that are preset into the light. Uh, and so I have the last cool. button set to go to my personal favorite one, which is just cycling through all the different colors and kind of a fun, really fast. Uh, rainbow like cycle. Yeah, there's a uh, there's a speed uh, and I set it to the fastest one because I think the animation is cool to watch it cycle through. But you can slow it down if you want. Um, I also meant to pull this up as well. The library for this um, just went out today. So you can get that on GitHub or in the bundle starting tomorrow. Uh, and the code is very simple. You just initialize it with your IP address. Uh, and then you can set the color, temperature, and all that stuff, uh, including the speed, which is not shown here in the simple test. But there is a, um, a speed property and a brightness property as well to control. So, nice. All right. Thanks so much, Simon. Are you doing a deep dive this Friday? Yes. Yep. I'll be on uh, Friday for the deep dive. Yep. All righty. So, folks, if you want to see how this is made and more, stop on by. Thanks so much. Yep. Jim. All right. See you. Nice work. Yeah. Good work. We're going right, go to go to, well, we're going to go to Pedro and then we'll wrap up with okay. Jeff. Yeah. Right, Jeff, hold, but, hold tight. But, gonna... but I think he, he has something good to show us. Okay. I think I, I, think I saw some, some, some action over there. Okay. All right, Pedro, what you got going on? Mute. Hey, guys. I'm multiple Pedros. <laughs> so this week we released the articulated wall mount for the Raspberry Pi. Mara had a cool yeah. idea to make this uh, like little three-armed attachment so you can hook it up to your wall. So you can uh, find like the stud and hook it up directly, or we have this little uh, base adapter so I can just slide yeah. in. But one of the things I I didn't have time to um, include in the video or the guide was this uh, stand, so you can just use it on your desk as well. It uses all the standard parts too. That yeah, we, uh, it looks like a that. nice Mac stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. right, good. I good like work. the slot in stuff. That's cool. And yeah. you can also build upon it and have a little webcam mount for the top and do all sorts exactly, of things. Exactly, yeah. So it has like the vent and it supports the, um, the SSD, the NVMe, and then the cooling fan inside as well. And of course, all the ports for uh, all the attachments and all that. Yeah. And then the only thing missing is like the like a speaker, but everybody in the comments was saying that the Bluetooth audio works really good. So I guess you can oh. just hook it up that way and then have a nice little um, desktop. Yeah, I think it's good that it's a little display that's like, it's very powerful, you know? Yeah, I was running Moo on it and I'm surprised of how fast it is. Um, computer. It's yeah, so we're gonna, get, computer. So we're gonna get these 3D printed and in the shop so that yes. we can stock yeah. The, yeah. You know, for people who don't wanna run their 3D printer overnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But super cool. I've also yeah, noticed that Folks are using either their 3D printer or a service. I ordered like a part for something and I thought it was going to be like an injection molded thing. Nope, it was a 3D printed part. <laughs> and in the past, I would have been like, you should have told me it's 3D printed, but it was so good. I was just like, oh, this is like new normal. So the resin cool. printing is, is basically, yeah. yeah, basically it's like you do the math. If you're making less than 10,000 10, of something or if you're yeah, like, cool. you want to iterate, just yeah. do resin 3D printing. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. And we'll see you after the new year on 3D Hangout, right? Totally. Right. All righty. See you next year. All right, Jeff, how did you do? All right. So if you bring up my window share, we've got the live. Uh, this is BTOP. And so yeah. you can see we're using up a staggering 1.2% of the CPU to run yeah. my demo code. That's okay. Um, well, which that's impressive. I think is, is fine. Um, you know, I haven't stress tested it with running other software. It might cause it to glitch out. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll do what we can to make it better. Well, but now that you, you're going to get the um, extra long transmission, but you know they fixed mm -hmm. that bug, so you can just send the entire buffer in one blast. Um, yeah. Using the CPU because you won't be like sitting around waiting. You could mm -hmm. actually go do something else. Right. So yeah, part of what I need to do, I think, is the 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 sending will be in a separate thread, and the the rendering will be in like your main Python program, so that. Yeah. Even if your Python program like connects to the network, it'll keep refreshing the the display. But yeah, oh. so there was a limitation of you could only send 64 kilobytes to the RP1 coprocessor at a time. Lame. And 
and I, I wrote them on the bug tracker at your suggestion. And I'm like, we, we really want more than that. And they said, why? And I said, for this. And they said, okay. And then the next day it was done. So See, that, was really, that, that was really exciting. I haven't, I haven't tested it yet, but yeah, that'll How hard would it be to remove that. Put the other, the other way to do this on there and see the CPU. It usage. doesn't even work. It doesn't, it doesn't work. even yeah. work. It doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out because- but On the Pi 4, I think it was using like at least 10 to 20%. Because every time there's well, like a- um, And it wasn't as fast and the bit depth was There's always good. a benchmark that someone tosses out. And there's never like, it's always a benchmark compared to a benchmark, which I don't, yeah. it's fine. But I actually like, like here's the thing that you wanted to do and here's mm -hmm. the thing now. So I guess we'll just have to say like, it's probably a lot less. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, the, from the documentation of the other library that's worked on the previous pies, it basically sounded like you need to devote one of the CPUs to it entirely. So like on a Pi 4, I think that would be giving up a quarter. Did yeah, it have four? four. Yes. So giving up a, a quarter, yeah. even if it wasn't going up to 100%, you're still and supposed it's to like, it's like leave it. up your I.O. as well. Mm -hmm. Like you can't use it for anything else. Yeah, although I have not tested whether we can still use the other GPIO on this. It should work but i have not tested it okay. um so we'll we'll find out we'll check on that um, right. there's not a stem up port on this board so i'm not sure what i'd hook up but we can talk about that when we get to that point okay all right very cool y'all have cool a, a great demo. christmas yeah great and christmas. uh thanks so much for bringing all your fun and smarts this year i think this is an excellent way to uh end the year because it just unlocks so many presents that people are going to be getting under the whatever tree pole thing mm -hmm. and they'll be able to start building cool stuff with it. Yeah. I've always said that my joy in this job is letting people make cool stuff. And this is really going to be yeah, one, a, be a mark in that column of, yep. Yep. I did this it. Be, this people will be people are enabled cool. now. Yeah. Very cool. Very fast. All right. Thank you All right, so thank much. You, everybody. Good night. Yeah, that's our show and tell for the night. Tonight. And yeah, sort of the year. And uh, thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out with us all year long. And for the last, like, 10-plus years, we'll be doing Ask an Engineer in just a few minutes. We'll see everybody. So if you have cool stuff, tag us on Blue Sky. Let us know uh, what you're doing. We'll still yeah, we're in, we're in all the social networks that aren't banned yet. I think there's a Supreme Court case for TikTok going on right now. We shall see. You know what's uh, interesting is, like, today I got a little notice that said, you can now stream live to uh, – TikTok from your your PC setup, and I'm like, oh man, I just got here. That was yeah, that was. Sort of I applied a long time. Ago. Yeah, so yeah. today that you know what I think they're letting everyone do anything because they're like, look, don't ban us. Yeah. Anyways, okay, we'll see everybody on the uh, Ask an Engineer show in just a few minutes. Bye, everybody. And maybe even on TikTok next, next couple of days. All's gone. Okay, bye. <laughs>